Welcome back to the channel. So in this video, I'm going to give you a quick update on life, second, businesses, and thirdly, investing. So first and foremost, life. Uh, neck is uh, looking quite thick here. Um, <laughs> always work on your neck. Um, best way to work on your neck is deadlifts, funnily enough. Your neck will just get nice and thick. One of the best ways of demonstrating masculinity is how thick your neck is. It's not actually that thick, it's just the way it looks. Anyway, um life so <clears throat> touch wood uh last eight nine days a little bit longer 10 days haven't been any pain um obviously if you've been following the channel you know the stuff i've been through uh my mum um is getting better every day so her leukemia is um is improving a lot and um yeah things are getting better all the time things are as good as they possibly can be uh my recovery is is really good. Um, I had a session with a therapist last week and with my therapist and she was very, she cried, she was so happy to see how much better I was. So things are going, they're in the best place they could possibly be. And um, I just feel very grateful for that. And uh, just doing all the things I need to do every day. And I think a lot of the things that I've learned through this, you can benefit from because we all go through difficult times. We all have, you know, periods that are challenging, periods that are full of grief what have you. Um, I mean, the number one thing that's helped me the most um, is many things, but one of the main things is the gratitude practice. I do that every day. Um, I do it throughout the day in different moments, always bring myself back to gratitude. Uh, it just centers you, makes you think in the right way. Um, second to that is obviously physical training and diet. Um, I am going to be switching up my schedule from training every day to training three to four times per week because I, I think I am actually overtraining. It's too much of a stimulus for my body. And although I am healing from it, I have really good recovery. I think it's too much stress on the immune system. Um, I did a test yesterday for my biological age. My biological age is in my 50s, apparently. So either this test is highly inaccurate or... I'm overstressing my body right now, so I'm going to change that. And uh, we must throw away old ideas if we believe, if we have new information that makes those old ideas obsolete. Um, so I'm going to adapt. Um, still cutting down, still cutting down to 8%. I'm bouncing around 10% at the moment. Um, on the weekend, I had a big uh, Tuscan adventure. I cooked for my family and uh, with my cousin. And uh, yeah, I think set myself back about a week or so so back on the uh back on the plan now um i don't know what i am right now but if i was to guess i'd probably say around 10 percent. so i reckon another few weeks i'll be at eight percent i think i can get there and uh yeah roughly 1800 calories a day i talk about this in some other videos but just gotta follow the plan and the weight comes off and you achieve the goal you want so once i'm there then i'll go through a bulk and the bulk is going to be a lean bulk and it's going to be very long. I'm going to be managing my weight through the whole process, managing my body fat percentage. And the kind of the, the long term goal is to get to like 85 to 87 kilo at 10% body fat. That's pretty, it's pretty jacked. So, um, but yeah, getting strong is a great thing. And anyone listening to this, if you're not strong, I highly recommend getting strong and getting lean because you just feel your best. You feel fantastic. So, yeah, so that's cool. Um, anything else in life? No, I think that's everything. Um, yeah, like I said, I'm much better than I thought I would be at this point. Um, and grateful every day. Okay, businesses. What's going on with the businesses? Well, to be fair, I have been having, I guess it's a life thing, but I have been having quite a bit of fun in my new car. And I have been slacking a little bit on the businesses and not working as hard as I should. But I'm pretty happy every day, which is a good thing. Um, so you can't put a price on that. And yeah, getting my head back into the game, working more on the businesses. Uh, so I've learned to code, it's growing, got more subscribers on that. I've got a few of the other little small startups, and then I've got Deal Saucer, which is doing around, um, well, I guess, around $20,000 in recurring revenue. But like in October, it did 30K pounds, so it's like $35,000. So it was quite a big month. Um, I think the next few months could be pretty big as well. So that business is going well. Um, very high profit margin business. My idea over the next year is to build a couple more of these and to do them in a way that's more organic and where I own more of them also, um, but also balanced with low stress and low customer support. 
So I, I want to build out a portfolio of these that work for me because deal source very much works for me. It works for all the shareholders. It's really doesn't require any work. 30 minutes of emails a month and in my pocket roughly uh, in dollars is around $5,000 a month after tax. And I'm just, I'm not really doing anything for it. It's a beautiful thing. And um, yeah, just going to keep building out more of those. Um, I think the beautiful thing about software as a service businesses, which I did on the video yesterday, is that when they work, they really work and they keep paying you in perpetuity. And this is uh, a version of wealth um, that's hard to match because it's true freedom. And a lot of people get this from property, but like all my friends that own property, it's not passive. It's really active. It's a lot of work, even simple properties are just so much of a headache and you're also taking a lot of risk because you're taking out a lot of debt that's that's how you create such superior returns cash on cash returns with property is the debt you're taking out and in our current environment who wants to be taking out debt so i have no debt and I have that cash flow and that's a very powerful thing so more than enough to, than i'll ever need on my personal expenses but the goal is to 10x that in a year so to go from say roughly speaking in profit 50k at 5k a month in you know in my pocket profit that's all i care about really um the other numbers are all bs right what goes in your pocket a month is all that matters so my idea is to get to 50k in the next year um roughly speaking in the middle of september actually so in 10 months so I've got to figure something out. <laughs> now, I sold a business uh, a few weeks ago, but I don't consider that a part of the goal. That's cash that came in, but that's not profit. So I, I'm talking about recurring profit every month. You know, no matter what, that money's still coming in. And um, I think it's a huge goal. It's um, it's not a huge goal when you think of the grand scheme of all the entrepreneurs that I know. Um, it's very small, actually. But I think it's very achievable, and I think with uh, the types of businesses, the type of leveraged businesses, meaning using technology as leverage, not with debt um, or capital or people, uh, with technology, it's very possible to do that. Um, it's also possible to do that as a solo entrepreneur with no employees and barely any customer support. I've seen it before, I've done it before, and uh, I'm going to do it again, and I'm going to do it at a bigger scale, and I'm going to do it on my own as well. So, yeah, it's cool, really cool. So that's kind of my focus um, for business. Okay, now let's talk about investing. So let's try and keep this under 10 minutes. So um, investing, investing. My current view on investing is interesting. I think macroeconomically is a very bad idea. I think next year is going to be really bad. And I think it's going to pose some amazing opportunities to buy things at cheap prices. So building cash is a really important thing for me. I'm trying to keep my expenses low and just keep accumulating cash, which I am doing month on month. Um, I would like to put to work 100 to 200,000 next year in dollars, roughly, um, into investments. And then I, I would like to get those at the bottom and roughly speaking in a year, double that. And then maybe another year after that, double it again. So, you know, turn like 100 to 200,000 into 500 600,000 over a few year, over a few years and if i add that onto my current portfolio and that will obviously grow at a similar rate then i think i could cross obviously it depends how bad things go next year um but i think roughly speaking in 2 years it could be at like a couple million quid in the portfolio and at that point you're at f you money let's just say it is fuck you money status and um regardless of the businesses everyone me my family we are good forever and we don't need anyone and that's kind of always been the goal um and then obviously as years go on and that compounds i think especially where it's going to be positioned which is all in tesla that's going to become tens of millions um in say seven to eight years um and then it's like super fucking money status so um and when i say status i just mean level i don't mean status as in status in society that's you should reject status. Um, it's BS. Um, yeah, so that's kind of the plan with the investing is build up cash. But there is an exception. And I'll try and say this quickly. I think Tesla's next quarter is going to be incredible. And there may be an opportunity to buy. And I'm considering and I'm thinking about it. If I decide to do it, I will tell you. But I am considering because I think we're going to get such a leap in earnings that the forward PE is going to be insanely low. And it may pose an opportunity where, regardless of what's going to go on with the volatility of the stock next year, it may actually be an opportunity to buy. 
because I think the difference between um, there's a trader online, I forgot his name now, who talks about this, but it's very true, is there's information parity. So that's where the market and the true information match. And typically where there is a big discrepancy between information parity, meaning here is the truth and here is what the market thinks. Here is the opportunity to buy. And that is possible in this quarter to see a big jump because the forward PE is going to drop at such a crazy rate because it's not like their earnings are going to drop month on month. They're actually going to keep at the quarter on quarter. They're going to keep going up. And with such a leap in earnings, um, I mean, it could comfortably be doing an annual run rate profit of 20 to 25 billion by next quarter. So roughly speaking, if the company is doing that kind of recurring profit per year, um, and then you adjust for growth and everything else, and you discount that back, uh, you're roughly looking at, if that's on a P of 10, um, it would be 250 billion a P of, is that right? Yeah, it's even more actually. So it's going to be really, really, really cheap. Um, so yeah, that's one thing I am considering, um, bit of a ramble, but it's just a, a Tesla point that I am considering buying. Um, but it, it's hard, it's really hard because I, I have to be disciplined, but it's, you know, it's just so cheap and I think the company's going to be huge. So taking the long-term view. If I do it, I will tell you, uh, one idea I do have is that I may buy and when I decide to buy, I don't go all in with the cash I have. I go in with one third and I hold the rest and wait for Armageddon and then go in with the rest when I think there is real true blood in the streets and the peak fear as they call it. I also believe that we'll have a double dip recession um, or double hump they refer to it as. I think um, I think that the world is nuts and um, everything related to inflation, uh, what is reported to us isn't the truth. Um, and I think the last penny to drop is going to be the is going to be the jobs. Um, so we're going to see, and that takes time to come through. And when that comes through, then people can't pay their mortgages and then the interest rates go up and so on and so on. Anyway, um, I'll stop rambling. That's my current thoughts on investing. Building cash, when I decide to buy, I will tell you. Um, yeah, I think that's everything. Um, I am off to London for a couple of days, so uploads will be a little bit less frequent. I will still do them, but they'll be quite rough, rugged and raw. See if I can get my mate to come on the channel. We can have a little chat, maybe a little podcast. We can talk about life and growing up, but he might just tell me to fuck off, but we'll see. Uh, this is the first time I would have been to London um, on my own since everything has happened, happened. So I was there for obviously almost a decade with my missus, so it's quite a big step for me. But I think I'm ready, and um, I think it will just be filled with positive, warm memories instead of sad stuff. So anyway, keeping it up, upbeat and positive. Um, I'm going to go now. I hope you have a good day. Um, thank you for watching. Um, and I'll see you tomorrow.